I have Dr. Michael Bornich here with me, a physician with Holland Hospital Family Medicine. And Dr. Bornich, we've been talking about long COVID and some of the symptoms um, you all are experiencing. If we can talk about specifically the, the variants in this situation, can you kind of discuss some of those variants that we're all seeing right now? Yeah. So, you know, the, the more predominant variants that we're seeing are the Omicron variants, uh, such as the BA4, BA5 uh, variants that have been uh, the predominant strain since the end of the summer. Um, we've been seeing a number of patients that have had long COVID symptoms, whether it be things like loss of taste or smell that lasts longer than their initial acute illness or things such as having issues like memory or persistent headaches that they didn't seem to have before. What are some of the symptoms? Are you seeing a, a different variety of symptoms based on the different variants that you all are experiencing? So in the acute phases, uh, nasal congestion has become more of a predominant sy uh, symptom rather than uh, the cough and the fevers and the shortness of breath that we're seeing with the Wuhan strains of the uh, COVID. And I know you were mentioning that some people are, I guess, believing that some of these are, symptoms are actually allergies or something along those lines. Can you kind of discuss um, that and why it's important to really pay attention to some of those symptoms? Absolutely. You know, this time of year, a lot of people tend to have allergy symptoms. You know, they're, uh, when the weather changes, they go and start getting nasal congestion, sinus symptoms, things along those lines. And so it's important if you're having those symptoms still to go and do some initial tests, maybe a home test, you know, just to go and make sure that it's not COVID because they can be misconstrued and they have overlapping features. Wonderful, and Dr. Bornich, can you kind of talk about some of the, the latest treatments or some of the treatments that do exist when it comes to treating some of these COVID symptoms? Yep, so, you know, first line type of things tend to still be our more symptomatic care that we have at home, whether it be your uh, decongestants such as your nasal sprays, your antihistamines, Tylenols, ibuprofens, those type of agents. Uh, there is Paxovid, which we tend to write for people who are either more prone to having serious illness, including that which they can become hospitalized for, um, or if they're having more severe features like some shortness of breath, maybe not bad enough to be hospitalized, they're having issues like the fevers, again, you know, more extreme but not bad enough to be hospitalized. Um, it really depends on the person because it's not necessarily indicated for everybody. As far as it's a five-day course of medication, uh, there are different dosing precautions depending on one's renal function, for instance, and there are certain medications such as statins that should be held if they are to be taking that medication uh, concurrently. They should not be using certain agents, so they should ask their primary care office about you know, are they sick enough to have it? And if so, should there be any medications that they should be withholding? All great information to know there. Can you um, just talk about when, I know we can experience some of these symptoms and some people um, don't experience very severe symptoms, but maybe if you've had prolonged symptoms or they get a little bit more severe, when should somebody seek um, outside help, um, possibly go to the emergency department if that's necessary? What would you suggest? So, you know, most people probably won't need to go to the emergency department for like long COVID type of symptoms, quite frankly. You know, it might be frustrating that you're having these symptoms that last for longer. You know, if you're having shortness of breath that's new or changing, especially in the presence of a extreme fever, like greater than 102 degrees, for instance, that might be a reason to go to the emergency department. But most of the time, you should probably reach out to your pri primary care provider's office if your symptoms are persisting for longer than about a couple of weeks or so and you're still having, you know, not, not back to your baseline type of uh, status at that point. Okay. And Dr. Bornich, can you just talk about some of our preventative measures? I know we hear a lot about washing hands, but just how important those things really are. Absolutely. So, you know, hand washing, you know, hygiene where you're not touching your face, that's going to still be really important. You know, not just kind of like throwing your hands underneath the faucet, but going and putting, you know, soap, water, you know, singing happy birthday yourself in, in, in your mind for, you know, a couple go-throughs. That's really going to be key. If you have, you know, friends or family members that are either actively having COVID or if, you know, you're having, you know, family members who are displaying symptoms that may be construed as that, it might be better to go and 
put that, that activity on hold. I know we've got the holidays coming up and it can be really frustrating when we've been looking forward to things like our Thanksgiving, our Christmases, but you know, going and really keeping ourselves away from those who may be ill, you know, whether it be COVID or other res respiratory infections like influenza. You know, so really you know, staying, staying our ground, staying away from those who are sick, washing our hands, good hygiene, you know, that's going to be our most important things. If we're in the primary care or the hospital type of setting, wearing a mask is still an indicated type of a thing, even though it's not necessarily something that we have to do in our day in and day out type of activities everywhere else. Wonderful. And lastly, can you just talk about the um, importance of the vaccine and, and who uh, maybe should get that and if people should really seriously think about getting that? Not necessarily everybody needs to go and have the COVID vaccine if you look at it from a personal perspective. If we're looking at what are we hoping to achieve, of course, from my perspective, I have a public health background and so I would say everybody should have the COVID vaccine. If we're looking at more staying out of the hospital and death, if you've had your first two COVID immunizations already, then you know we're still seeing data that shows that those individuals are still not at high risk of going and um, becoming hospital level of sick if they have no other comorbid conditions. Now, if you're over the age of 65, you have like diabetes, heart disease, some kind of immunodeficiency, yeah, then you should probably get the latest bivalent vaccine that has both the older Wuhan type of strains as well as the Omicron variant with the, uh, uh, the BA4, the BA5 strains that it additionally covers. So there is no one size fits all answer and ultimately you should go and talk about it with your primary care uh, physician. Thank you, Dr. Bornich. You're welcome.